afternoon, Solanus community, and welcome back to Celesphere here in Munich, Germany. My name is Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be bringing you our final four segments of the day with my co-host Rob Strache. Rob, it has just it has just sped on by, hasn't it? It has. It has. And we get our intro, our musical introduction to it. It's like we cranked up the music in the car with the top down right now. Going That's down exactly. The highway. You know what a great analogy, Thank Rob, and what a what a nice segue into introducing our nice guest, Patrick from BMW. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. So glad to be with you. I'm really looking forward. Yeah, you've had a busy day. You've been doing some presentations. You're in charge of process mining and RPA at BMW. You're a busy man. Yeah, but it's really fun. And I've, I've been responsible for the process mining at BMW for seven years now. And every single day you learn so much new stuff. And you learn here, you also meet so many nice people that you have met before. And that's coming like coming home. Oh, I bet it is. And I bet it's great to see, to see your community. So... Break it down for us, because now that we've got the audience's attention, everyone's a BMW fan. I know Rob's a BMW fan. I'm a BMW fan. We're not just saying that. What does process mining look like at BMW? What does your day look like? Yeah. I mean, here at BMW, we realize that um, data is really central, and, 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 and getting the best out of data is, is really crucial. So if you have the right data, you also have to optimize your processes. And at BMW, we saw that um, only with optimal processes we can win, we can be uh, the leader in our field. And um, therefore, it's pretty crucial to combine data and processes in the best possible way. And we really managed to do that in the last couple of years. Um, and we, um, have started basically in our, um, yeah, in the main processes like um, engineering, uh, uh, like production, like customer support, but we've grown since. And now, for, for me, it's really working with the different business units to understand what are their needs, whether they maybe, maybe have pain points with the processes, how can we help them to create transparency and to end of their processes. And this is really the exciting bit. And, and I think part of it is that you, you kind of said that, you know, before this, that every car is basically touched by Solonis in the way that the process mining works across all those different divisions. What is it that the center of excellence, excellence that you need really focus on in helping the rest of the organization out? In our center of excellence, we have got the operational excellence, we have the tool excellence, and we have process excellence. And oh, this is really what we, yes. Yes. we We try to, to, to really bring this to our customers, to our end customers. And we work together with so-called centers of competence in the different clients, the different uh, business areas, to be able to excel for them, to really help them to get the best out of their processes. And um, this is really, I think, a key factor for us that we have got this central COE where we can basically see, okay, where do we have to go? Where can we get better at BMW? And how can we create this transparency? Because, I mean, the automotive world is changing so fast, and the nature of change has changed. So we really have to adapt constantly to new competitors, to new demands in the outside world, and this is where we help our businesses to get even better. And just to, just to add some data to the scope of the amount of processes and different things you're getting data from to optimize, BMW is shipping 2.5 million vehicles worldwide, you have 30 production sites, and you've got sales in over 140 different countries. That is a lot of, that's a lot of data. How do, you, how do you prioritize which processes you optimize when using a tool like Solanus? Yeah. Yeah, we really look at um, where can we get the best business value out. So we, we look at how big is our process, how much is there potential to improve, also where do we have maybe targets to achieve, and how can we help with a tool like Solanus to achieve those targets. So it's really talking to the business, um, evaluating their processes, and then deciding where to go. And this, of course, together with our business experts, because they know best. They know their processes, and they know how can we help them. And you, you talked about, uh, before we were on here, about how you actually brought some of the business users that are here actually talking this year. Uh, what are some of the improved efficiencies that they're realizing that got them excited to come here? Because you, you start to talk about it, and it's like it's nothing... You can't hear from the business side of why they embrace this because it changes 
not always easy for, for organizations. Absolutely. I mean, when we started in 2017, just to give an example, we started in the uh, plant here in Munich, and um, they had just introduced a new paint shop, and they were looking at how can we improve our paint process. It was the most modern paint shop in the world, but of course, when you start a new technology, there was always some, some, some things that don't work smoothly yet. And we said, we came there, um, as I see guys, we said, we can help you. We can help you to understand your process. And this is really what happened. And they were really excited about it. And yeah, after some time, we managed to, uh, to extend this to all the plants. You, you mentioned those numbers. Um, we are active in all regions now with this, 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 this process, intelligence, this process mining. And this is really where we have to go. So we start really looking at a small use case to see how can we help them to improve, in this case, the, this uh, space shop and then see how can we make the process transparent so that people really understand and they can communicate. So this mining for me is also language. So I think normally you only know the process in your small segment and you optimize your small segment. But you should never look at the process end to end. And this is really where Salonis comes in. We can really make people talk to each other from purchasing, from customer support, from production. They speak the same language, they speak the process language, and they can understand and optimize the process and end. I love that you just pre- you just titled it that process language across those 30 different plants. These are in different countries. Everyone's speaking a different language natively, probably, yeah. in these use cases. What does the upskill process look like internally? How has adoption been? And how do you teach each one of these unique environments to leverage Salonis? Yeah. So we really uh, give them the right training. So we have two approaches. We do self-service so people can really use Salonis as a self-service tool. And we also help them to adapt by giving them implementation support. So both is possible. And we have so many different people. You have someone from financial services. You have someone from production. And they just think very differently. So we offer um, their dedicated support in the, the way they need it and they want it. And um, also, I mean, we also see the cultural differences, of course. So some people are maybe a bit worried that we might ma- do uh, naming and blaming, which we don't do. We really want to optimize processes, and we don't want to blame anyone for things that maybe don't, don't work right, as long as they really want to improve and get better. So, I, I, again, to back to what Savannah was saying and what you were saying, it's, it's a worldwide implementation. And to get to that scale, how has it been to scale that up because it's, you, you have a lot of partners, you have a lot of data, a lot of different environments around the world. How did that scaling across your entire environment go with Salona? We started with two uh, user licenses, so it was really a very small start, and now uh, we have already uh, more than 1,600 users, and we are growing much faster because now what we have is um, AI, Gen AI. And so far, we mainly use it for experts, for people who understand the tool, who want to, to use the tool in the right way, and who are somehow also a bit into IT. But now we also have the possibility to go for every single BMW. And so you, in process, these are not just about experts. Everyone is having processes every day, and we want them to improve their, their daily work. And also, I mean, when it comes to data, um, we have got a so-called cloud data hub at BMW, so a central data lake, you could say, where we store most of our IT systems, of our crucial IT systems, and this also helps to scale faster because now we can access the data, there's data in a great quality, and we can implement our use case much faster than we could in the past. So it would seem like, because you just brought up AI, and of course that's, you can't go anywhere and not hear the words AI right at the moment. How, how do you look at AI, and to your point, it's there seems to be a flexibility to how you can use Salonis to influence agents and co-pilots and things of that nature. How are, how are you using it, and how do you look at it? I think this is really the important thing that we have got this flexibility to use it in different ways. So we're using the co-pilot, but we're also using the interface, the, the, the API, so that we can really use those agents in systems or in, 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 in models that we had before, and, and so, so I think this flexibility is very important for us, so, so that for each use case, we can choose the right way to use it. And yeah, it's really working fine. We have already implemented some first AI use cases, so Gen AI, but also um, um, other AI use cases, and we are really happy so far with the results, and I think there's a lot of potential still to come. How does the driver benefit 
from all of the hard work that you do, both leveraging AI, but in general, optimizing these processes. Is it lower prices? Is it more efficient supply chain? More reliable vehicles? Talk to us about the human benefit. I think all of them. I mean, for us, the customer is always in the center, and we always try to optimize our processes so that we have happy customers. And this is really important. So in production, we make sure that the quality is perfect, that the um, production times are optimal, so that also the cost can be reduced, that we reduce energy consumption, which is also, of course, important as we have this sustainability. But we also look at the customer journey end-to-end to see how can the customer get their car faster, how can we improve the quality for the customer, the customer experience, um, to really have happy customers in the end. And this is really crucial for us. And of course, we also do both this money for our colleagues, for our employees, but in the end, it all has to be for the customers so that they have for the better experience with BMW. So, how did, how did you bring along the different groups? Like, you talked about paint. And the paint is a very specific. There's chemicals. There's all kinds of stuff that goes into that kind of part of the manufacturing process. How did you bring them along with where they're not experts in process mining? Or they may know their process, but they're not experts in the technology side. How do, how do you bring somebody? And it could be on another group just using them as a that's really, that's really a challenge. I mean, the paint guys, they have been working in the paint shop for 30 years, some of them. So they know really all their stuff excellently, and then they, they know what to do. And we came in as, as, as IT guys, and we have, had no idea about the paint shop. So for me, it was always yeah, it's quite easy. You put the car in, and you take it out, and it's painted. But it's much more complex. So we really had to convince them that this tool can help. And every BMW employee is different. So, so, so we really have to approach them and understand their needs. So we normally get their data, do some first um, proof of concepts, and show them what is possible. And then they come up with so many new ideas that they want to implement, that they want to do. So it's really a bottom-up approach. We don't force anyone to use uh, both intelligence, but we give them the tool, we enable them, and show them, okay, it's great benefit for you, you get insights, and maybe also you get data insights. So maybe there was an issue before, they knew about it, but they could not quantify it. With the knowledge, for the first time, we can really say exactly how much benefit can there be if you improve this process in this and this way. So this is very important for us. That's got to be really fascinating to go in and learn from those those vertical experts. I mean, now I'm just thinking about the material science and the complexity of paint and the conditions in the factory, and, and to really think about. I, I bet you get to solve problems you didn't even know existed, or or overcome challenges that you wouldn't have even thought of. Absolutely, and once we have put the data in, they come up with so many ideas. And so for us, um, as IT guys, it's so much learning new stuff. So every day we need new people, we need new challenges. So yeah, it never gets boring. It's just um, those are sometimes sound quite theoretical and quite quite boring, but it's not at all because you work with people and you try to help them to solve their problems. And this is really what drives me every single day. I gotta ask. What do you drive, and what color is it? Since we're talking about paint color, now I need a visual of your vehicle. <laughs> now I've got a, an X3. And, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a silvery, silvery color, so really, really nice. And yeah, I enjoy driving it every day, so it's, it's, it's good fun. <laughs> that's awesome. No, no it's a, I, I think it, to me that's the whole thing. It's, it's about the people and how to show them how this can help and how it's going to bring them to the next thing. What? what what do you think is the, the challenge that you see next? Is it AI that you, you're how do you better use and use cases for AI? There are several things. First of all, so far we do process mining within the company. For me, it's also we also have to do process optimization with our suppliers, with our dealers, and so on. So it's also important to do this cross company process mining. This is one next step. Also, one other next step is to get the best process. To get, with the help of AI, so we really to help the people um, who are maybe not the biggest experts to understand how can we improve the problem, what are the next steps to take in a at least semi-automated way so that they are fast in, in getting those challenges and that they are fast in adapting to those challenges that are in the outside world, because I think this is really um, so crucial for the automotive world that we are the first ones, the fastest ones, and the most agile ones. Uh, well, we're, we're excited to continue to tell that story. And speaking of, Patrick, this has been awesome. It's flown by, even with the live band in the background as our, as our accompaniment for this ride. Final question for you. When we have you on the show next year, same time next year, 
What do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? Yeah. I want to say that we really do processes end to end, that we have a digital twin that really helps us to do this end to end. I uh, look at process mining. I also want to say that we have extended the user base even further using this um, new technologies like AI. Um, so that really we are a tool for every employee at BMW to optimize every single process. Also in process areas where we are maybe not so strong yet because they, it's, a, it's a very, um, yeah, very IT or system agnostic tool. So we really have to use it in, a, in a, even a broader way. I think we are in a good way at BMW, but there's always more potential. And I'm very happy to do this and achieve this potential with our, um, with our colleagues and our end users. Awesome, Patrick. Well, we can't wait to hear all about it this time next year. Also, can't wait to check out the number one most visited place in Bavaria, a.k.a. the BMW Museum. I know Rob's been there. Well, that's fantastic. It, it's, it's just such, such history, rich history. Just awesome. Love it. Thanks. Love it. Thank you. Y'all are, really selling me on, y'all are selling me on a new car. And the cafe right above it. That's great coffee. <laughs> I, I, I was very happy about that. <laughs> what, what a fantastic yeah, anecdote. Well, nice to see you back there. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. And next time, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll connect up. Nice. <laughs> it sounds like we all need to go get a coffee yeah. and check out some BMWs. Yes. Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. Rob, thanks for your yeah, insights thanks as so always. Yes. And thank you all for your wonderful attention that you've given us all day today here at Solana Cellisphere in Munich, Germany. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for high-tech news.